Welcome to the Pharmacy Quality Solutions Quality Corner Show, where we talk quality of healthcare and explore what that actually means. Let's dig into performance measurements, the equip platform, pharmacy goals, and personal goals. We will also occasionally cover topical healthcare news and maybe throw into the conversation a few of our own nerdy passions and hobbies. So turn us up. The Quality Corner Show starts now. Hello, Quality Corner Show listeners. This is your host, Nick Dorich, and we welcome you to the next episode of the Quality Corner Show. Today is going to include an in-depth discussion about how pharmacies can consider the safety of their patients during the COVID pandemic. For those of you that have been tracking updates and guidance from the CDC and other public health officials, there have been various recommendations about what patient care services can or should be offered and what services could be withheld or temporarily postponed. While the safety of all patients is of the utmost importance because of COVID-19, there can also be a detrimental effect if patients do not receive immunization updates or if they delay other routine checkups. Let's be clear, there is not a one-size-fits-all approach on how a pharmacy should operationalize their services. Each state, each county will have its own situation, so like always, we recommend reviewing your most recent public health guidance for your particular location. Now, with that being said, it seems like a great opportunity for us to speak with a pharmacy owner to get some of their perspective and to learn how they have managed updating guidelines, how they have changed the workflow and their storefront for their pharmacy, and of course, how they communicate these changes with their patients. This serious topic requires a true expert, not just when it comes to patient care and pharmacy operations, but also someone that is a bold communicator and is and is a veteran in the podcast and social media landscape. Therefore, I've reached out to our guest for today, Ben McNabb. Dr. McNabb is a pharmacist and he's the owner of Love Oak Pharmacy in Eastland, Texas. Ben, welcome to the Quality Corner Show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, I look forward to the conversation. Great. Ben, this is very exciting for me to have you on the podcast as I've heard you on numerous other podcasts on educating and training courses, and I've seen you at various conferences. Unfortunately, we probably won't be meeting up at a conference anytime soon, but we can certainly engage in a more digital or virtual manner. Ben, I gave a very brief introduction for you, but do you mind sharing your background as a pharmacist and also what drives you as a passionate pharmacist? Sure. Well, I started out at 16 years old, right, Um, uh, working for the pharmacy that I later purchased in Eastland, Texas, my hometown pharmacy. Started out as a delivery driver and uh, went to the University of Texas College of Pharmacy, graduated, came home with my wife, and we purchased uh, Eastland Drug. And we went through a rebranding process and all the fun things that went into making the place our own and and trying to share our love and commitment for our local community. So it's been really great. Um, We have really focused on adherence. Adherence has been a huge, you know, part of our pharmacy ownership experience so far. Um, I was, I had the pleasure of receiving the um, adherence practitioner of the year award from NCPA in 2018, which is a great honor. Um, So that gives kind of, we really specialize in adherence packaging. So that Gives a little background in our experience. Another thing that uh, is part of my background is I'm the lead luminary of uh, CPS in Texas, a uh, clinically integrated network of pharmacies many people might be hearing more about. We like to refer to ourselves uh, as an accountable pharmacy organization. Uh, we believe that uh, holding pharmacies accountable to um, quality metrics can help drive improved outcomes and lower costs. So that's been exciting. Uh, additionally, I've had the pleasure of serving on the Texas HHSC Value-Based Payment Quality Improvement Advisory Committee. So I get the uh, pleasure of speaking with uh, you know different health plans, health systems, and other committee members on ways to improve care for Texans. And so that's been a great pleasure, especially as a CPS and luminary trying to communicate our value as pharmacists uh, to CMS and Texas HHSC. That being said, um, what drives me, I I would definitely say quality, um, not quantity, drives my passion for pharmacy. I really um, like to think that we have to move away from lick, stick, and pour pharmacy, you know, just product dispensing and only being valued for product. I I think we have to move more and more when it comes to uh, getting back to 
relationship driven healthcare, make sure we're showing our value that face to face communication and contact with pharmacists can um, improve care and, and, and trying to drive um, care through these enhanced services. And um, that's a little bit about me. Ben, thanks for that information. Uh, I mentioned you and I have had the experience of talking before, and I greatly appreciate your passion. It, just hearing, hearing from you again has me excited, has me ready to run through a wall for pharmacy. So folks, uh, there you have it. I'm very excited to, for, for, for this conversation as Ben is not only a great pharmacist, but a great communicator. At the Quality Corner Show, we like to share a variety of updates, and I think this show will really help your pharmacy understand how you can take guidelines and clinical updates and how you can apply them to your pharmacy so that you can continue to operate your community pharmacy in the safest manner possible. Ben, with that, are you ready to dive into our discussion for today? Yes. Excellent. So question one, then, when the COVID-19 pandemic began to hit the United States back in March, pharmacies had to adjust on the fly and implement some quick and radical changes. As the pandemic has continued into the summer and now into the fall, different strategies have been considered or further implemented. To put it bluntly, that's the experience of science. We learn as we gather new information and that informs our new decisions. It doesn't mean that the prior experience was necessarily wrong, just that we have new information which may change the approach. Taking the latest science and research into account, pharmacies are having to prepare not only for COVID-19, but also for the 2020-2021 flu season. So my first question, what steps will your pharmacy be continuing so that you're ensuring the patient safety while preparing for both flu season and the continued COVID pandemic? Well, thank you for that. Um, I think um, one of the main things that I've been very impressed with actually is um, the usefulness of med synchronization. So essentially, we've been able, especially with complex patients, patients that have high risks of complications from COVID and trying to limit the amount of store transactions that they're experiencing because they're either med synced and not visiting the store three to four times a month, but maybe once a month or possibly moving them to 90 day supply to help uh, reduce the chances of um, coming in contact with other people that have uh, the virus has just been a fantastic tool. And uh, we've seen a very you know, strong increase in that activity. You know, we also have taken precautions with extra sanita sanitation procedures. We've had uh, uh, PP PPE. We have uh, required masks for people to enter our pharmacy, um, which, you know, was an interesting thing when, it first, when we first implemented it. But everyone seems to be very accepting of it now, which is quite surprising in West Texas. But we have been able to keep everyone very calm and accepting of it. Um, we do, I did in, install, uh, plexiglass shields in front of my registers to help protect our patients and our, and our, uh, you know, staff members. Uh, we've, we've had social distancing stickers placed on the floors to help encourage that while in store. We have, uh, you know, uh, hand sanitizer at our entryway, uh, especially when it comes to our, we actually own a soda fountain and deli, you know, like the old days in our store as well. And we actually have a self serves frozen yogurt bar. So as a restaurateur as well, it sure has been an interesting time to limit self-serve and, and, and do those things differently. Uh, we've also seen a major, you know, increase in drive through and curbside delivery. And we've been using some new tools like having people's credit cards on file and at the point of sale to limit uh, contamination when they're handing our cards. And then another thing that as far as definitely preparing for this next season, I'm hearing more and more people doing this too, is having some type of online booking system for, for immunization and, and COVID testing or flu testing on their website. We've had that since um, we built our website way back, but I cannot just imagine the uh, increased uh, utilization in that uh, feature on our website coming up. I think that I've heard other pharmacies that have done extensive COVID testing already that have just seen a dramatic improvement by making things more appointment-based and less reactionary um, walk-in type of interactions and trying to plan as much of that uh, work as possible. So that's a little bit about what we're doing. And uh, I think uh, overall, it's just been going pretty smooth. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> ben, the first part that comes in my mind as, as the top question is what has the response from your pharmacy staff been like? 
there's been a lot of changes for them and how these things have been implemented. Some of these services they may have been used to doing already, like enrolling patients in MedSync, but if they're doing more, that might be adding a stressor to the system. So how has your pharmacy responded? You know, I think they've, they've responded pretty well. I think uh, it helps that um, we've been very, uh, we've tried to be very understanding as um, you know, business owners and, and try to make sure the staff feels safe, uh, that they don't feel pressured. And like, you know, I'm, I'm not pressuring my pharmacist to consider doing COVID testing or flu, flu testing during this time of year. I think just making sure that they understand that we care about them um, is very important. Um, we've tried to build things to help motivate our staff. We, we try to have regular meetings with them, but also give them motivational um, incentives to help improve MedSync appointments uh, with patients and try to drive the type of metrics that we're looking to do. So we try to give them um, financial incentives for that and just to make them feel part of the team as we move through this time of COVID and all the challenges that come along with it. So I think that that, that has helped with some of that. The first question focused on what the pharmacy is doing, but the patient plays the most important role in healthcare. A medication action plan designed by a pharmacist or by a prescriber only works if the patient is educated to understand it and motivated enough to stick with the plan. It's also incumbent for the patient, prescriber, and pharmacist to maintain open lines of communication for that action plan in case the patient experiences side effects, in case they cannot afford the medication, or anything else that may impact that plan. Let's talk about this plan with immunizations, COVID-19, and patients. Ben, how do you engage with your patients to inform them about what services they should be receiving or what different expectations they should have when coming into your pharmacy? Great question. And I think what we really anticipate leveraging, especially this year, is our MedSync. And because we're turning that into the appointment-based model. When they come in to get all their medications for that month or possibly have it delivered, you know, that that becomes their appointment. And during that appointment, that's when they're assessed for any additional services that may be provided, such as their immunizations, whether it's flu, um, their pneumonia uh, vaccinations and uh, possible COVID vaccinations at that time. So we're going to we're very excited to leverage um, that uh, style of, uh, of, of care to help with some of these challenges this year. Additionally, we've really, uh, I've really enjoyed using some of the equipped dashboard features. Uh, we do have access to some flu and uh, pneumonia vaccination features in the equipped dashboard that helps us identify patients that are good uh, candidates uh, to proactively reach out to and help and improve um, vaccination rates. Uh, we use other data tools as well. Um, I, th- I think also just making sure that maybe your phone um, automated voice messaging system is also mentioning those services. Um, I'm actually excited. I- I'm trying to move more into um, social media live streaming. I think trying to, people are looking for connection right now. And I think trying to make sure that, you know, spending some, some real, um, you know, making a real investment in time and in some, um, videography equipment to, to make it professional, but get the message out there to our patients um, where they are. A lot of them are on social media, so that's been exciting. And then I would definitely say that there's some new ways of engaging patients. So for instance, as a CPSN luminary in Texas, we're excited about an asthma management program that we have very likely starting October 1st. And so to help reduce ER visits for children with asthma, um, we definitely need to get those uh, vaccination rates up. And so part of our, you know, value-based payment model will be to make sure they either get that flu shot or get that uh, COVID shot um, and whatever other things that they need to, uh, that needs to be managed. So I would say that in a lot of ways, there are going to be these new value-based payment models maybe emerging in your neck of the woods across the country um, that might be incentivizing you to be very proactive at, at improving those vaccine rates to uh, improve outcomes and and uh, be a part of these new models of care, which is very exciting to me. Ben, related to this, now having a conversation with a patient, nothing new. Uh, Talking to a patient about an immunization, nothing new there. Uh, Talking to one of your patients about having an appointment in the pharmacy, that's probably something they haven't haven't talked about before. What's that like? And and what have you found to be effective as to why you convince a patient to have come, come and have an appointment in the pharmacy rather than a doctor's office or, office or why it's different? 
Sure. Well, I think uh, it, it it definitely helps for us. It's I don't know. Maybe it's just been a little bit more easy since you know we do adherence packaging. We I I, I think it's important to delegate to staff. So our our staff um, does some of the med reconciliation calls, and they they're calling these patients monthly. So essentially, that call is a great touch point to capture additional information like vaccination status or their blood pressure for that month or their blood sugar for that month. And then, you know, um, they can uh, discover certain things that need to be escalated to the pharmacist, especially for workflow purposes. So those are all very important things, but it's really become more of a natural part of that patient's interaction with our pharmacy that they're in uh they're in communication with us because we're being very proactive with our outreach. And during that proactive outreach, that's when basically their appointment is taking uh, place, whether they know it or not, they've, they've got an appointment. They're, they're, they're speaking with our staff on a regular basis. Uh, they know what to expect, uh, the type of information they need to have ready, whether it's an update on their blood pressure or an update on their blood sugar. Um, and then when they get to the pharmacy, uh, the pharmacist um, can make appropriate interventions, especially when um, things need to be escalated to uh, clinical intervention. And so it's really just become a natural part of a workflow. And I think it's just something that the patients be, uh, come to expect. Thanks, Ben. Um, I'll, I'll move to our final question here for the discussion part of the, the podcast. And, and even as I've put this together, we've already hit on a lot of details how you're managing the patients, how you're managing your staff. So this may be a little bit redundant, but I think the intricacies here, the execution is where it becomes really important for everybody to understand so that they can take these lessons and move it to success. The expectation by many is that this upcoming fall will be one of the busiest times that pharmacy has experienced. Pharmacies are still going to be managing and dispensing medications. There may be COVID testing and education. There may be immunizations. There will be immunizations, and hopefully that includes COVID immunizations in the not-so-distant future. Uh, there's going to be items that are like Medicare open enrollment that are, again, somewhat seasonal. I could go on and on with these list of services or other topics that are going to be involved with pharmacy. How is your pharmacy preparing the staff then so that they're not overwhelmed with all of these potential service opportunities? Uh, we want pharmacies to be successful. We want patients to receive effective care, but it seems like there's a lot more being added on um, to, to, the, to the backs for a lot of the pharmacists and pharmacy staff at this time. So it becomes important for a pharmacy to start working ahead of this wave so that staff members have a clear communication plan, so that patients have a clear communication plan, and they have clear expectations because ultimately this should lead to a greater patient satisfaction and also less stress for the pharmacy staff. So what's, what's that been like for you and your team um, preparing the, uh, preparing everyone for success in the next two, three months. Right. So definitely, I think the first thing you must start with is make sure that you're communicating well with your staff. So I'm surprised, you know, all the time, you know, learning pharmacies, either not having staff meetings or not regular meetings with their staff. I think that would, that's an incredible thing, incredible tool that every pharmacy needs to do their best. You know, we're all super busy. It's hard to find that time that we're all not not, you know, in the fray of pharmacy life. And, but if we can set aside real um, quiet time to have just one-on-one -on -one with the entire staff to get all on the same page, I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, so trying to find that ability is, I think is very important. And during that time, I think it's important to explain, not just, you know, telling them the tasks they need to accomplish, right? They need to understand all the motivations that go behind why they're doing those things. And so, not failing to mention um, why they're capturing someone's blood pressure, you know, it makes sure they understand that because they're capturing that blood pressure, or because they've asked about the immunization that maybe we're potentially saving that person's life or improving their care or reducing their occurrence to go to the hospital. And so those are things that I think in the end make a big difference, especially as you start seeing more young staff members out there, millennials and, and Gen Z people, they, they really need to feel like they have purpose in their work. I, and I think even more so than previous generations. So I would say, especially if you have those younger staff people, man, they just want to feel like they're making a difference in the world. So I think it's important to have that conversation with them. And then um, I think one thing that we're really doing to prepare this staff, and I just want to keep as much stress off of them as possible. So making sure that more of our appointments this year. It's more appointment based. It's less walk-in. It's less at the spur of the moment. You know, we're, we're going to be busy. 
it's going to be extra busy this year, especially with the increased uh, you know amount of testing. And then we have a whole nother immunization to give besides flu most likely. And so just trying to have more systems in place to um, help with employment-based uh, scheduling and, and reduce that walk-in care, I think still keeping that walk-in care, but trying to be as much as proactive as possible, I think will incredibly help reduce the stress on the staff. Do you also find, Ben, that the soda fountain and, and or ice cream helps reduce stress on the staff members? That's right. So definitely we've been doing a little bit more frequent pizza parties and other ways of keeping them motivated. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be financial. A lot of the time it's, uh, you know, doing the little things around the pharmacy that really makes the staff feel like they're cared for and that you care about their health and well-being. And uh, I think that that goes a long way. So. Yeah, it certainly does. It's very cliche to go with the pizza party or some of the ice cream treats like that, but um, it's always yeah. good to feel the appreciation, right? And you can do that a number of different ways, uh, depending on your staff and their interest. There can be many different ways you can take that um, and, and make sure that you're keeping up that motivation um, and making sure that you're you're treating, acting them, working with them like they, they are people. They're there for work, but um, the more that they know that they're appreciated, the better the work can be. Ben, I do appreciate you first and foremost, as this has been a really great discussion and it's important for pharmacists to start working ahead of time so we can all be prepared for the flu season and for the continued impact of COVID-19. Before we close out the podcast, I would also appreciate if you can share some additional thoughts with our listeners for the Quality Corner Show. We've been on a recent kick of goal setting and how you adjust with a difficult situation. This was obviously spurred on by the impact of COVID-19, and we've, we've shared some of our suggestions for a pharmacy, but this seems like a great time to hear from a pharmacy owner about their 2020 goals, what your, maybe what your original 2020 goals were, and how they've changed throughout the course of the year. So Ben, do you mind sharing how you've adjusted some of your goals, be it the personal or professional goals, either for you or for your pharmacy, uh, because of the, the course of the 2020 year? Honestly, definitely the impact of COVID. There, there's definitely been some things that has really changed my perspective, especially with staff appreciation. Man, we just we have to do more and more for my, for my my personal business. Just making sure they understand how much we appreciate them. So just like we were talking about, that's that's been a number one thing that's been on my mind for for the last, especially 2019. We were working especially hard on improving uh, MedSync and, and 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 trying to improve our employment based model. But now we're moving, especially with I flipped the pharmacy grant that we're involved with from the Community Pharmacy Foundation and CPSN. We've really been looking harder at these um, capturing, you know, vital signs like um, blood pressure, for instance. And so I've been trying to financially incentivize my staff, which is, is helpful to them because they're getting some additional bonuses. But I'm trying to uh, capture, you know, 200, 300 uh, you know, blood pressures or um, fasting blood glucoses per month and make interventions based off of those. And so that's been a nice um, new challenge for us. We really want to move into these chron chronic disease management opportunities, and we're trying to prepare our staff for these future models. And so that's just been exciting. As far as a person on a personal level, and I think a, a lot of people would agree with this, but there's a real, there's a real likelihood and maybe a real, um, you know, chance that clinicians, you know, pharmacists, in my opinion, are clinicians. So this is clinician burnout. You know, it's, it's the, uh, it's kind of a hot button, hot button topic right now. I think for me, I've been, ha I've had to learn to say no more often <laughs> and uh, try to make sure that I'm not over committing my time. Um, I need to make sure I'm spending more time on, you know, personal, um, you know, time to have more time to relax, especially and de-stress, especially during this COVID uh, pandemic. So that's been stressful. But I would say an interesting thing that I found that helps with my uh, with my burnout, honestly, is addressing um, SDOH. So addressing social determinants of health. I've just been amazed at how it really it really does make you deep down feel like you've done something good for someone and. Different way, not necessarily from a clinical standpoint, but maybe maybe someone is having food insecurity, right? And you know that you've been able to identify that as a pharmacist. You see that person uh, has no has no access to good food, and I was able to you know help them get set up with the food bank, or I, I was I had my delivery driver go pick up 
some basic staples and take it to the person's house. You know, those types of things make you feel like you're making a real impact in someone's life. Um, even though we, we do that with pharmaceutical, you know, therapy and adjustments, but that's been one thing that I've really grown to, to say, man, this is something that we could do more of and do, do it more proactively and more, just be more intentional. That's the word being intentional with our uh, activity at identifying that it just makes you feel good. And, uh, I think that's, that's really helped me uh, relax more during this time. Yeah. I, the, the word intentional, I think is really key. Uh, we've introduced Cora from the PQS team on some of the quality corner shows and internally at PQS Cora. And I use that word all the time. It's if you're doing something, it's you do it with intention, you do it with purpose. Um, and if you're finding that you're not able to do it, it really becomes a question of why you're doing it in the first place, right? You mentioned that learning to say no. I think that's one of the best skills I've learned that as, as an adult. And Ben, it makes me appreciate you being here more on the podcast because you didn't say no. You said yes. And so <laughs> hopefully this has been rewarding time for you. Um, beyond that, I would also say you were talking about A1C, blood pressure, getting, you know, doing those tests, getting those records, sharing with providers. I think you've got a lot of pharmacists salivating about the idea that they could be doing that and doing that as much as you and your team are, are starting to work that way. Before we get to the close, I, I always like to have our guests end with a, a, a note of positivity, a quick message, you know, motivational speech, that 30 second hoorah. So do you mind just sharing you know, your, your last comments about your excitement for pharmacy and what pharmacists can do to keep that future bright? Definitely. Well, let me just encourage everyone. I, th I think, man, I can really feel a lot of momentum building behind this profession and behind practice transformation. And I'm just so excited about the future, uh, future being built on quality, not quantity. And I, I just, uh, I just ask that everyone join in on that effort. We all play a role um, from whatever practice setting we're in and, and whatever chain or independent small business that we, we uh, work for. And uh, we're all in this together. It's our profession and just excited to be a part of it. And uh, it's, it's really up to us to uh, move that ball forward. I just appreciate the opportunity to uh, be with you today. That's an excellent comment. And if we were not recording from a long distance and if it were not COVID, I'd, I'd probably give you a hug right now, Ben, for those great comments, but uh, not, not allowed currently. Um, final item, Ben, I'm sure many of our listeners will have questions or want to hear more from you. Um, do you, is there a way that people can contact you if they'd like to hear more about how your pharmacy is operationalizing and how you're adjusting with COVID or maybe about some of the other services that you're doing? Definitely. I would say the best way to contact me um, is with my CPSN emails so that's B McNabb, B M C N A B B at C P E S N T X dot com. That'd be a great way to reach out to me by email, especially in regards to quality improvement initiatives and uh, and other opportunities there. And, they, and if if you feel like it, I'll give my phone number over the internet here. But but if you'd like to, you can call me at my business phone. It's two five four six three one nine six six two. Excellent. Thank you, Ben. I'm very glad we've been able to include you for today's show and your openness about this topic and how your pharmacy is operating, um, how you are modifying your work and how you're meeting challenges head on. The best way to learn is to learn from our peers, those that are going through the same types of experiences. Those that are on the front lines and are practicing what they preach and are helping to positively change the profession of pharmacy are of the utmost importance for us. Ben, you're a tireless advocate for pharmacy, and I appreciate your willingness to join for today's conversation. Um, if you would like to join our show, if you know other pharmacy advocates that would share this message, um, we'd love to hear, hear more, and I'd love to have you back on the show again sometime. Um, as far as this, and we, we can look to find uh, more information about quality, uh, and, and but we're going to be at the end of our podcast today. Speaking of that, we're going to move on, but we do have a final message for our podcast listeners. So until next time, our team here at PQS has a couple of favors to ask of you, our podcast listener. First, we encourage you to share this podcast with two friends, because if you share this with two friends and each of them shares it with two friends, it really helps us hit a larger listening audience. Second, we also want to take a moment to remind you to subscribe to the podcast wherever you may find it. And then if you have any questions or topics you would like us to address, please contact us. The best way to do so is to email info at pharmacyquality.com. Let us know what is on your mind and what we can address so that you are fully informed. 
Our goal is to continuously improve our podcast content and to provide meaningful information to our listeners based on current topics in healthcare, technology, and quality measurement. We want to help you become as effective as possible in how you care for patients and improve public health outcomes. So until next time, we wish you well.